Hello, coders. And I do mean coders. There's really two kinds of coders that I want to talk to tonight. One is the obvious set of software coders, the tool makers in the audience, and those of you that are online. Your enterprise architects, your devs, your engineers. But there's another set of coders that we need to co bring into this conversation, this global conversation. They're rule makers, they're legislators, they're policy makers, and they're regulators. We need to bring these two sets of codes together. One set of coders does performance testing against machines and networks. They measure throughput, they measure fault tolerance and security. The other set of coders measures human behavior. Their compliance of people and institutions is expressed in multi-party contracts that cross jurisdictions and that meet regulatory requirements. The thing that both sets of coders have in common, as well as all the global stakeholders, is this notion of trust. We hear that word again and again, particularly in this new world that we live in. So let's define it. Not so much like trust grandma, but we have to have systems that are reliable, systems that are repeatable, and systems that are secure. We do that because what we want to have be part of both sets of codes is trusted transactions, whether that's voting or consensus, et cetera. We want to transact at high volumes, high velocities, in a wide variety of circumstances. If we get this right, where the tool makers, the software coders, and the rule makers, the re regulators, can align these code bases, great things happen. The world really changes. Think about MasterCard a couple of decades ago, where originally a localized bank, a localized sets of merchants created this new card system. But it was through the extensibility and scalability of the regulatory environment changing, as well as the technology changing, that we now have a trust framework in everyone's pocket. All the stakeholders understand the terms of trust in these new MasterCard and Visa networks. We don't have to look very far to see what happens when we can align rule makers and tool makers in the New York Stock Exchange. What a fantastic ex explosion of both wealth creation, technology, and regulation. We have trusted transactions within the New York Stock Exchange or the FTSE or the Hang Sen that create enormous new wealth. It is because we've been able on a global basis to reconcile these two sets of codes that new things, new opportunities, new wealth is created. In the world of standards, in the OpenID Foundation, we have the OpenID Connect, which becomes the standard for how identity is managed on the internet. If we get alignment, we get more trust. Innovation is accelerated, both in the legal world and in the technology world. Markets expand and governance is trusted. But all's not well in the world. That comes as no surprise to the world in general and in this strange phenomenon that we're seeing every day in the mass market. We've got three known unknowns. We've got the first factor, which is markets correct. So as mass media begins to tell grandma about Bitcoin and grandma begins to risk her savings on these new kinds of instruments, that mass market coverage drives public sentiment. And when public sentiment is driven, political intervention is only a matter of time. It's no surprise to anybody in this room that the SEC is struggling with how to regulate this new phenomenon and that other legislators in Colorado and Arizona are doing their best to help blockchain industries grow in their states. That's not ha only happening in the US, but it's happening on a global basis. So when governments intervene, we have to be mindful of this kind of conversation that occurs between the public and private sector. On February 14th, I was on the Hill at the 
House Science and Technology Committee, and the Congress people were asking the experts, well, what should the role of the government be in this blockchain and distributed ledger world? And someone said, well, let's have a national commission on blockchain. Now, that may be a good idea. It may be a not so good idea. The question is, is the industry ready for that conversation between the public and the private sector? To what extent can the industry lead that conversation? And what happens if it's an ill-informed enterprise? What happens is lawyers litigate. So let's move beyond that and see if we can't create something new, a foundation that crosses all the different permutations and solution sets in this wonderful industry, this very disruptive technology. Let's see if we can't align the tools and the rules so we can expand the pie in the marketplace for everyone. Let's build on what's built, not just Hashgraph, but the great work that's been done in other Ethereum Foundation, the Sovereign Foundation. Let's pull them all together so that we can improve what we mean by governance, so we can define it in terms of standards, in terms of voting, in terms of how consensus is reached in governance, much in the same way that it is built into software. If we get it right, if we understand governance and define it in a new way, we can, def we can inform governments. So let's take this approach. If you want to do this new foundation, for sure it has to be nonprofit. It must be global because the internet is not a single jurisdiction phenomenon. And it has to move across industries. Most importantly, this approach has to be inclusive and it has to be technology agnostic. So we're proposing something new tonight to map on to the concerns that you heard earlier about governance of these systems to the relationship of governance to governments. And we're going to introduce you to what we're calling the Distributed Ledger Foundation. It's a new foundation that has two jobs. It is to secure the work that is being done right now to help better align these two code bases so that we can build on what's built. The other thing that it will do is to begin to inform governments as a private sector-led conversation about what regulation should look like, not only on K Street, but also in Beijing, also in Singapore, and in London. So we could talk a lot about what the foundation aspires to be, but here's what we're going to do first. We're going to go to the best place on the planet for governance. The Stanford School of Law and Informatics has been researching blockchain governance for the last six years. The professors and student bodies in that law school has been looking at this phenomenon and trying to understand how law and the governance of the future will, will develop over time. So on the 9th of May, we're going to pull the best and the brightest into a conversation and talk about standards for smart contracts aligning the financial interests of stakeholders in these new business models and consortiums. And yes, how voting works in these new systems. We think if we can get it right in Stanford, we're going to be able to take that show on the road because we have to. My friend Helen is going to tell you about how we're going to move from Stanford to London, from London and beyond. Come on, Helen, we'll talk some more about it right now. Well, thank you, first of all, so much to Don Thibault for your leadership of this important new foundation. And even more importantly, perhaps, thank you to the entire Hadira Hashgraph team for inviting me here today from London. I hope that I can humbly provide my part in being a bridge between different parts of the world that are working on these important technologies and also to play my part as an advisory board member of the foundation. It's amazing how life works out. I've kind of come full circle from spending 15 years in public policy formation to going to a Bitcoin conference or being involved in organizing a Bitcoin conference four years ago, where I suddenly started to understand the amazing impact that these technologies were going to have on some entrenched business and social problems that we have in the world today. 
And so I kind of put aside my public policy career and said, I'm just going to devote myself to this one thing of trying to teach the rest of the world, people who are not developers or are not from a financial background, why this is more than just about payments and currency and why it actually has this much wider and very, very important role in creating the technologies and the internet of the future. So just to talk a little bit about what we're actually going to do with the foundation, uh, we want to do three things. We want to be intentionally international and consult globally. So we're a global organization, as Don mentioned. We want to collaborate across the whole of the industry. There are many, many people already doing great work in this field, whether they're academics, whether they're lawyers, whether they're companies building the technologies of the future. And we want to include everybody under this new umbrella. And if we can do both those things simultaneously, we'll end up with this private sector-led public-private partnership which I think will give us a very strong foundation to influence public decision making. And that's key because policymakers, regulators and legislators are getting much more interested in these technologies, but there's still a huge lack of understanding about what they actually are. And definitions are important. So we're going to practice what we preach. We're going to go on a roadshow around the world. So we're going to start by taking our message global. As Don mentioned, we're going to be in Stanford in May. I'm going to be involved in organizing our London event. Um, we're going to bring together some of the leading UK universities and other partners for that. And then we're going to travel to continental Europe, to Amsterdam, where I actually had my first experience of Bitcoin and where they had the first Bitcoin Boulevard. And other parts of Europe are doing great things as well. We've got Crypto Valley in Switzerland. We've got Estonia's e-residency program. So we can see examples of global best practice that we want to bring into this conversation to show what's really going on. And hopefully, by doing all of that, we'll get a bird's eye picture of the industry and the chance to really bring those ideas and those best practices into the, com the public conversation. So we're going to reach out to all the players. As I mentioned, there's already many foundations out there. We'd like to work with all of them, and we'd like to work with all of you. This is not our foundation, it's your foundation. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. Um, I'm already involved in various organizations, including the British Blockchain Association, as mentioned at the beginning. Um, and also recently giving evidence in Parliament in the UK to a new all-party parliamentary group. And there are other think tanks and other groups working on this. So we want to bring everyone together, and by doing that, amplify and magnify the voice of the industry and give us greater influence. We've got three key things we want to do. We want to talk mainly about governance, and within that we want to talk about voting, best practices, what are the new financial models being created, um, and what should be done What's, what are the issues surrounding open standards? When I spoke to the UK uh, all-party parliamentary group on blockchain, this was one of the first meetings that's been held. Uh, the chair of the group, the Right Honourable Grant Shapps MP, said that he'd looked up in Hansard, which is a record of all the parliamentary debates in the UK, how many times the word blockchain had been mentioned just to see. And there were only actually five mentions of it in the last four years. So. Um, only two of those, in fact, were actually about the innovative potential of the technology, and the others were sort of subsidiary to another conversation. So this is still a huge education process for people in decision-making bodies. Um, and if we're going to trust this new trust layer of the internet, um, these policymakers need to strike the right balance between, on the one hand, not stifling innovation, but on the other, also safeguarding the public interest. So this is our foundation, the Distributed Edge Foundation. We're about collaboration, consultation, and partnership. And we need your membership, your ideas, and your inputs into our future research, our future events. And we want this to be all about you. As Don mentioned, uh, this is a kind of a call to action. So we're going to start now. We've got the roadshow in progress. But we want to hear from you what you want. So this is open source. We're practicing what we preach. We want to be distributed around the world. And we want to be decentralized in how we approach this topic. We're not providing all the answers from on high. So we very much hope that you'll join us. I'm very proud to be a part of this. I would love you to be a part of it and be part of the future of this amazing technology.